Howdy, my name is Rowdy Gowdy, and I'm at CRS, and uh, I'm getting my caffeine on. Me too. <laughs> Cheers. Caffeine is good. We're good fans. Yes. Fans of caffeine. It's you have been spending the week talking about your third single, a yes. third single at radio at the age of 20. Yes. It's pretty impressive. Well, thank you. So go ahead. Talk about your new song. Well, the new song was actually the first song I ever wrote. Um, it's called My Girl's Hand, and your third one's when you finally start picking up some steam. You go out and you meet people on your first one. You start to get a name on your second one, and then your third one, you're established, typically, if things are going well. Um, this one... People are surprised when I say it's the first song I ever wrote. I wrote it when I was 15 years old. Most of the time, you know, your first song ends up in the trash. But for mine, it came from an honest place because I didn't even know there was a music industry at that point. Um, and it was just an emotion I had. I didn't even tell people I wrote songs. The song's called My Girl's Hand. I wrote it after prom night. Um, I had a friend throughout high school that I always had a crush on. Um, but she was my best friend and she had a boyfriend and I was very happy for her because her and her boyfriend are very happy. Um, basically, they're soulmates. And so I was very happy for her and I took her to the prom and we got along great but at the end of the night I got to thinking man I'm so happy for her and I want her to be happy because I really like her but I should be holding her hand not him and so I just wrote it from this honest sincere spot where I wasn't mad at the guy I wasn't mad at her I was so happy for the situation but I was just kind of defeated inside somewhat about the fact that it's not me holding their hand that's making her happy and it was just absolutely as sincere as it gets both my parents are teachers and um i didn't know anybody in the industry i didn't even know there was a music industry i mean i thought songs just ended up on the radio somehow and <laughs> so i just wrote the song and that was the song that got me the deal and now it's the song that's really making waves on radio and i feel pretty blessed to be out there spreading a message it's just it's true it's honest it's sincere and i think that's what the fans really dig about it and it sounds different which is really cool it's something new to offer and i'm not a hater of any music i'm just a lover of really good music and um, i'm happy it resonates with the fans when i wrote it i didn't even know anybody was going to hear it so it's it's yeah. cool that it came from that sincere of a spot and i think it's um I've been talking to a lot of people about vulnerability this week. It keeps coming up. And mm -hmm. as you're telling that story, um, it, th that kind of lyric would also have come from a vulnerable place. Because yes. you're admitting, I, I, I want something that I don't have, which is a vulnerable thing, but a courageous thing to do. It's an act of courage to say that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because my name is Rowdy Gowdy, right? And if you come to a show, I do, I go crazy. There's something about <laughs> music that just gets me going. And... Um, I was the kid slinging mud. I was the kid, you know, slinging gravel around corners. I was that guy. And when they asked me if I've ever wrote a song, I never told anyone I wrote songs. And I said, yeah, I wrote one. I had like 40. But I, I didn't tell people because it was cool to be in like the football team where I was from. It's a small town. And I didn't tell people any of that. And when I played it, they were very confused about the song. And I hope you all go and check it out. It's called My Girl's Hand. And he's like, you wrote that. Well, yeah, that's the song I wrote. And I have this persona of being, oh, I'm, you can't touch me, I never cry, none of that stuff. And you're right, it was a vulnerable thing for me. My girl's hand, I didn't even think about it. And it's a poem. And so it's like, I didn't even realize I was a songwriter. And then I finally moved and I, I, I met people I finally got along with. Like truly, the creative energies and everything like that and uh, that's not creepy that's just like when you're when you start to create you get on a high it's just like when you're uh on the pitcher's mound and you're about to close the game it's that kind of high that you get and uh i finally fell in love and it was with music and i'm i'm blessed to be here and people say 20 years old that's crazy but i knew what i wanted to do since i was little so it's it's kind of like i've been doing this for 20 years i'm 20 years old though <laughs> <Exactly>. so <laughs> right. how long have you been in music well since the day i was born exactly one of the things that I noticed in the bio was the music really took more of a place in your life after suffering an injury that took you out of sports, which had up to then been the primary driver in your life. Right. I'm always interested when people have to change their their goal because mm -hmm. it may be, oh, I want to play. Was it baseball, football? I was a soccer player. Soccer. I wanted to nice. play professional soccer. I'm, I'm from Europe. So yeah, like that. cool. Or so football. You could say, I want to play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to go play for you know. Um, 
Major League Soccer teams, and suddenly that can't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Through something that you didn't control, mm -hmm. how did that experience change your outlook on life in general? It rocked my world for sure, and I know I've, I'm definitely a crazy person. When I do something, I go insane. Like, I'm 100% in, and that's why some of my teachers hated me, because if I'm not in, I was not in it, and if I was in it, I was all over it and so sports were literally my world and I think that had a lot to do with who was around me you know you come from a small town your dream is to be the star football player and there's nothing wrong with that you want to make your town proud all this type of stuff and I was kind of that kid I was gonna I played football I played basketball and I had the dream of being kind of the town you know the guy you know he's the star on the team and uh, I suffered with so I was diagnosed with osteochondritis discans that's a big name for you got a bad knee basically and they said if I really want to walk when I get older I should lay off the of sports and they said they advised no sports at all and sports was all I did I didn't even play guitar at that point uh, I didn't realize that I was a musician all throughout my life I had been performing at the racetrack but it never registered to me because sports was it was tunnel vision and I just wanted to be a sp so dad brought home a guitar and um I became obsessed with that and I literally learned without a lesson. I had one lesson to teach me how to hold the guitar and from then on I said I'm just gonna learn and I just had to figure out how to play and I was in love and here we are. <laughs> so it's, it's cool how thing, things happen and goals change because it's it sounds really cheesy but it's totally true. Everything changed. Everything changed in that moment and now it's like I'm actually where I'm supposed to be, and I've never been happier in my life. So. Very cool. I recently listened to an interview with Roseanne Cash, and she was talking about having seen her dad in every situation at home and on the road, and that the only place she really saw the whole person mm -hmm. was on stage. Is that something you can relate to? Oh, I've never really thought about that. I'll have to think about that myself. Um, I've, I've thought about like, okay, you know, and of course, you're, when you tell your parents you're going to be a musician, is that a good idea? You you're know, like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay, good, best you're luck. you're going to get a real job. <laughs> right. And, uh, but I thought about it and I'm no dummy by any means. I, I, di I did well in school. Um, I started my first business when I was 12, um, sold it at 18, successful, profitable business. And I've always been different in that way, and I thought, you know, it would probably be easier if I just went and I was going to be a banker, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking on that, but I really got, it. if I was not creating music, I would be missing a part of me, and I know that for a fact, because I have considered it. When music gets hard, oh, it gets so hard at some point. There's moments when you just don't even want to touch your guitar, and I'm, it's just what happens through the process. and. I got to think, I'm like, why, why am I even working so hard at this to play for somebody who doesn't even want to listen to me, all this type of stuff. I could just go and get my finance degree and be fine. I'd make a ton of money. It'd be great. But there is something that would be missing from my life. So that would be my answer to it. I haven't really thought about on stage yet. And I think that's because I don't know if I've yet gotten to the point where I truly think I am whole on stage I'm oh. still getting there um, it's just like my studio performance it's just like my producing I, and I don't know it might be a creative terrible thing where I'm never going to be satisfied but I'm coming into my own and like literally this year it's uh, it's kind of interesting to think about I feel like the stars have finally aligned mm -hmm. and like I finally found that that thing that I've been looking for that sound that I've been looking for and that sound that my fans have been wanting they know they knew it was there they saw the spark and now it's finally I'm I feel you like I'm finding a way to bring it out exactly and I'm learning I'm not saying it's there I'm not saying this is the best stuff you're ever gonna hear in your life and I hope it is <laughs> but uh I'm finally f truly feeling like I'm actually on the right path. I'm truly finding my sound. I've finally found how I write the music, the sound I want, and the performance I want to give, and the philosophy behind it. And so uh, now it's just go time. I call it my grind time. Now, yeah. I, now it's just making a name for myself, and that's what well, we're doing. I think it's an important part of anybody's career, and it almost doesn't matter what type of creativity it is, whether you want to be a painter or a sculptor or a musician. I think it takes a long time to truly find yourself and mm -hmm. how you want to be as an artist and, and how you want to express yourself. And it sounds like that's the the path you're describing. You needed a couple of years to figure out 
who am I as an artist? And mm-hmm. now you're you're there. You got it. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a lot of punches, really. And it's not a bad punch. It's just when you're when you're in music, it is yourself. It is yourself communicating uh, something that incredible, something more powerful than yourself, which is very hard concept. And I'm not trying to sound all like. Ooh, you well, know. In these interviews, you can. Okay, good. And <laughs> this is why th- what what I do. <laughs> good. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, when it took me a little while to figure that out, and that was just through learning. Oh, I mean, I was still at that point. My first album, I was still learning how to get up on time, how to get dressed, how to match. That was one of my biggest issues. How do how do I match my clothes? Let alone how do I communicate through music to an audience what i'm truly feeling and have it be authentic but yet able uh comfortable enough to the ear that it's soothing and what harmonies do i want to use all this these are huge decisions and that was all happening at once for me and i I do i it took me a little bit of time but i finally feel like i'm here and now i I think people can see it that i keep getting radio people coming up and saying your sound is so different I'm going hallelujah. You know, that's yes. what I've been waiting for. That's and what I want. That's been the dream since I was 15. I, really, I was already hearing what I wanted. It was just a matter of being able to be enough of a person, to be enough of a musician, to be enough of know enough, and to have enough life experience to truly do what I wanted. I had that vision. I had the dream when I was 14, 15. I knew what I yeah. wanted to do. And now it's just literally getting myself to actually do that. Yeah. And uh, it's cool. It takes a lot more time than I thought. When I was 15, I thought I was yeah. going to be famous at 16. It takes a lot of time, but it's it's an incredible process. And um, I'm going to keep on growing. Who knows what I'll be saying next year. Yeah. You know, and that's what's so exciting about it. And that's why I, I'm my whole self and I'm or at least as close to my whole self as I'm going to be in music. Yeah. So that's... There's, as you're talking, I'm thinking like a t- hundred questions and, and all lots of things that I, every sentence I go, oh, I want to hear more about this. And, oh, I want to hear Uh-oh. more about that. That's so a good we'll thing. definitely do something um, later and, and sit down at the office and uh, I'd a love bit to. more in depth. But there is, there's a lot of that, you know this industry and mm-hmm. you'll... You know, somebody will want you, oh, we'll believe in you and we'll want to make a record with you. And then they'll go, but you're going to wear a different shirt. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have you sing a little bit more like this. And they'll want to make these little changes. Is that something you understand is just appreciate as part of the game? Absolutely. And that's one thing where I'm sure I'm getting into sticky ground here Con- the and the, the commercialism size of the thing is i if if i'm interpreting the question right um it's just like when you set out to make a record with someone um you both have your own egos you both have and i've co i've co-produced my album mm-hmm. and i had to learn through that process that you have got to take your personal ego out of it it's not about me and that's a weird concept that the music's not about me and that was hard because it used to be all about me. I used to, when I wrote My Girl's Hand, that was all about me. It was only my feelings, and that's all that mattered. But the thing is, is that there are a ton of, like, brains involved, different people, different input, different walks of life. And so it's about, do I focus on my own personal ego, or do I focus on the end composition? And I choose to focus on my, the end composition, which means I don't sacrifice my ego and that is the way I look at it so when I set out to make a record with someone this person has likes this about this type of music and I like this and we're gonna battle over that and we're gonna fight and we're gonna scream about it but at the end of the day what is best for the record not what is best for my ego because my ego I want 16 guitars on that that's what I want (laughs) but but the record guy's going okay no that's not right but let's find a medium balance or let's find maybe he has a totally different idea let's put a bass clarinet in this what in country music yes let's put a bass clarinet into this you're crazy okay let's try it does it work does it work is it right for the composition then i don't care what anybody else says so about changing my shirt you know i i just got a sponsor with strut which luckily yeah, I, had, so there, <laughs> I i had a, i had a say in that just so y'all know i i actually got to sit down and map out the clothes and she made them for me which is super cool she's great great stuff and i know i'm supposed to say that but literally it is great stuff i would not wear it if it wasn't and i'm okay with changing some things to exemplify certain because i know i'm not an expert in branding Mm -hmm. yeah i like the songwriting side of things and i know that you know my publicist knows way more about publicity than me so why would i sit here and tell her that she's wrong 
that that doesn't make sense and that was something I had to learn I mean I got slapped around when I was 17 because I knew everything it's weird yeah. I knew so much more when I was 17 and now all of a sudden I don't know anything at all and I realize different people have different strengths and what I'm weak in or what I can not necessarily weak but somebody stronger at why would I not want them on my team trying to make music if music is the purpose make the music the most important thing and if somebody can bring their branding skills into it and make my music better because more people are going to hear it why would I not want what's best for the music and so that's the way I kind of yeah. look at commercialism no I think that's an, an excellent excellent response thank you <laughs> <laughs> full marks the I, as I said prior to, to us sitting down, I, said, I like to think, um, and I Good. saw that line in, in the bio where you said, I like to study. Um, I also consider myself a lifelong learner. I never mm -hmm. know enough. I always want to understand more. Do you think that's a personality thing, or was there something in your upbringing that you were told, this is a good way to be? Man, I don't know. I just took one of those personality quizzes. <laughs> it said I'm uh, one of the rare ones, one of the intellectual thinkers, which is not good. Uh, do oh, that it. is good. It that is good. Is very good. We need uh, more of those. Yeah, and... Um, I don't know. I mean, both my my mom is. You said your beer, they were in education. So yeah. I wonder if that's if it seeped through. Yeah, I think that's where I get it from. And mom worked all the time, so I got my work ethic from her. And then dad studies everything. I mean, he he was mad if he missed one on a test. And I'm not really big on standardized tests if we want to get into the education world. But what I'm more. I just, I'm hungry for knowledge of what my sole purpose is, my legacy I want to leave in the world. And I, I've taken a lot of time with myself in the past two years. And that sounds weird, but like I didn't go off to college and stay in a dorm and I wasn't surrounded by exterior influence. I really got to come to know who I am. What is my purpose with my life? What do I really want to become? Um, and I have it mapped out and it changes every day. But in order to get to that, I have to learn all this stuff, and it intrigues me. But I'll tell you what, you start talking about photosynthesis, and I, my brain shuts off because it's just not what I love. I was known for just being absolutely crazy about learning everything I can about what I love. And then I'm going to have somebody else come on my team who has the same dream, who has totally different skill set, and knows all about that. So that's my... So I'm definitely not like I s maybe come off smart, maybe I come off dumb. I don't know what I come off as. I'm okay with whatever. But I would definitely say I'm probably like a mile deep, but like an inch, wait, an inch yeah, across. Yeah. What is that called? You know, like so. Like I, I know a lot about certain things, and I just I'm so hungry to know more and more and more and more and more about those things. And then other things I'm just happy with, and I love people for doing that type of stuff, yeah. doing whatever they're passionate about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it takes all yeah. kinds of kinds. Great. I have been ending with this question, Killer. which has been generating some cool responses. Uh oh. <laughs> which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? I don't know. It's hard. Is it my own stuff, songs? So you write okay. your own soundtrack, but other songs that you feel represent phases of your life or represent parts of your personality. I've never been asked that. I like it. Okay. Let me think about this. Get a little more caffeine. <laughs> It's tough. It's tough. That's a tough question. Get what would be in the soundtrack of my life? I'm a huge fan as far as producing goes, and this would be me right now. This is a 20-year-old Mitch Gowdy answer in this, because I'm sure it'll be different next year. Um, but I'm a huge fan of both authentic instrumentation implemented with digital instrumentation, and finding a balance between the two because digital is an instrument. It is an instrument if you learn to use it with soul. If you use it to quantize everything and to beat match everything, you're not using soul. But if you create what with digital world along with the authentic world, all of a sudden you can create the most amazing thing. And that's the wave of where music is going. So my answer to this is I would have a dubstep track with strings, real strings, with an amazing guitar player and a tuba for my dumb moments uh, doing the soundtrack in my life. If we were to do like a movie soundtrack, that's yeah, the way yeah, it would yeah. be like. Because I'm trying to find that balance right now between the digital world and the analog world. And where, where do we stand? Well, we can sit and complain about the fact it's going digital. And I know this is an odd answer to this, but 
that's the wave of the future whether we like it or not and I think it's it can be used in a beautiful way some of the most beautiful tracks I've ever heard are totally digital okay yeah so what's the difference there it's the soul playing it it's the person behind it so I would love to have some killer digital tracks because then we can have a dance party and then uh, all of a sudden have beautiful moments like Vince Gill coming out and singing that changed my life yesterday uh, and that would be the soundtrack of my life I'd like it to be a little bit of digital a little bit of analog and I know that's Vince a Gill singing <laughs> and Vince Gill singing over it there we go and Chris Stapleton okay doing background oh, harmonies yes. Yes, I've never seen. I would like to hear them sing together. So there is my very weird answer to that. No, I like it. Question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.